Alistair, if you're gonna use me to market your clothing without my permission, the least you could do is make plus sizes. So I saw people in the comments of that video being like, I don't understand the big deal. Alistair, if you're gonna use me to market your clothing without my permission, the least you could do is make plus sizes. So I saw people in the comments of that video being like, I don't understand the big deal. They're just using her audio. I don't get it. Let me explain to you what the problem is. If you go to Hollister's website right now, and I did because I've never shopped there, so I had no idea what size they go up to. They go up to a size 20. So what I gather is that Hollister wants to be a brand who markets to straight size people and is like, oh, we carry plus sizes and they want to target the demographic who wants to buy from more inclusive brands but doesn't actually want to do the research to know what a size inclusive brand actually looks like. Duh. Every brand is going to 100% try to incorporate as many people into that brand as humanly possible. Now, that might just be them lying or putting on a facade or some kind of grandiose illusion to try to persuade you to get into the store to try to buy the clothes to begin with. Because it, it, when you walk into the store, that's already getting you into the store. That's going to be like incentive alone. So odds are, if you walk into the store, you have a higher chance of buying the clothes than you would have if you never walked to the store at all. So obviously, advertisement is 100% um, good for them. When it comes to that, when it comes to like advertising their plus size clothing options and stuff like that. Now, if we're talking about very specifically what happened with Samira, if you guys don't know, yesterday's video, I think it was yesterday's video, um, Samira was very, very upset that Hollister was using her audio and put that audio over their advertisement for, I guess, I think it was Snoopy, like Snoopy clothes or whatever, because Samira was saying that Snoopy, so Snoopy clothes were really, really bad. I thought it was hilarious because Samira's entire point of that video was to show that plus size clothing don't come in very, very, very many varieties. And if they do come in varieties, it's usually just like really cringy or um, campy stuff like Snoopy. And Hollister took that and was like, you know what? This would be great for advertisements. And it actually worked out in their benefit. Um, and it's really beautiful too because Samira's whole point was that this is a negative thing. And then Hollister took that negative and turned it into a positive, thus increasing their sales, which is very, very beautiful, right? I can't believe that Samira literally got bitch slapped by her own words by advertisement. And now Samira didn't say this, but she did threaten to sue them. She didn't say it outright, but she did say, you better take that off your, your platform ASAP, which is like, come on now, Samira. You, we all know what you do, right? You go into these stores, you record yourself talking to these they're talking to people behind the counters, trying to make it seem like they don't know that you're recording. Um, you're recording in the in the changing rooms. You're recording in the store. You're recording when you talk to these people, and you, they don't have any consent. This is a this is a private this is a private uh, uh, corporation, private um, store, and you're walking in. I'm pretty sure most of these stores have um, laws and not laws, but like policies to not record in these in these private stores and things such and so forth. So it's like it's open to anybody. Like, like what do you want, bro? If you're gonna fuck around to find out, then you're gonna fuck around to find out. I don't understand personally what this person's even trying to say. I thought that this was like, I thought this was going to be like a lesson on what you can and cannot do when it comes to taking somebody's voice and like putting it towards something else. It is fair use because they're using it in a transformative way. So obviously, but this woman, I guess, is not going that route. I guess they want to talk about companies that are trying to seem more inclusive than they actually are, which every company is trying to do that. Like when you see video games and they incorporate like a black woman playing as a Nazi or whatever, that's usually the reason. Like, you know what I'm talking about? They're trying to incorporate a lot of different demographics of people and that's fine. Um, I know a lot of people don't like it when they go, you know, go woke, go broke. And I kind of really understand that to a certain degree. Some of these companies do go a little bit far, just incorporate women or black people just because, and there's nothing inherently wrong with incorporating, uh, you know, minorities or whatever. I just hope that whenever you're doing that, it's more for the art and it's less for you need to reach a quota because usually if you're just throwing in black people or women because you need to reach a quota, the, the art usually sucks because you're not building that character for whatever the role is instead of just tossing them in. But anyway, to buy from more inclusive brands, but doesn't actually want to do the research to know what a size inclusive brand actually looks I like. I do think that they do know what size inclusive brands are, but most of these companies will just say what they can say. It's kind of like advertisement on you know, sodas or bottled water or anything, really. If you go to the store, uh, a really good prime example of, you go up to the front of the deli and they'll have those pre-made sandwiches. And on the pre-made sandwich, in big in big numbers, it will go 300 calories. And you're thinking like, oh my God, 
300 calories for this sandwich is is crazy. It's a crazy ass little amount of calorie for the sandwich. But then you look real close and you go, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Per serving. And you go, wait a minute, per serving, it's cut in half. So naturally you think it's 300, 300. All right, that's not too bad. But then you look a little deeper, three servings. And you're like, wait, how is it cut in half already? And there's three servings. So that means that like each the corners and then the middle piece, that is the three servings. But it's not even cut up like that. So it's like that. Um, they can get away with it. They're going to get away with it. If they can say, oh, yeah, we have plus size clothing in stores. But what they mean is like a shower cap. Then, you know, you did get a little bit bamboozled. You did get shamadoed. Um, So it, it is what it is. Most of the plus size selection is going to be online. So they're using Samira's sound promoting um, something that she put out. Beautiful. So that they can be like, hey, look at us. Like we're size inclusive, even though they're not. And this goes hand in hand with brands who use like plus size models to model their clothing, even though they don't actually carry those sizes. Yeah, they're just doing that to get sympathy points. It's obvious, but you guys fall for it. I don't know why you guys always see like plus size models or like people that are, oh, look at this. We have a big fat woman advertising our clothes. So like, we're so good, right? No, they're just virtue signaling to get sympathy points. If you fall for it, that's up to you. I mean, it's like, I don't personally like that stuff, but it's up to you, man. Or like when you go into the store and you see a plus size mannequin and people just freak out because they go, oh my God, plus size mannequins. Dude, this plus size mannequin is like maybe 210 pounds. You're literally 400 pounds. Like we're not even, not even close to the same amount. Like at least, at least for this plus size mannequin, I, I can actually kind of see the outline of a human being. You, you've lost that about 200 pounds ago. It's called curve washing. We've talked about curve washing before. It I didn't know there was a, I didn't know there was a terminology for that. Curve washing. Kind of like whale watching when I see these fat people walking into the stores huffing and puffing. Carry those sizes. It's called curve washing. We've talked about curve washing before. It's. That's the only type of washing they're doing, huh? Trying to use plus size people in their marketing, in their promotional stuff, on social media to try to attract people who want to be buying from size inclusive brands but they're not actually size inclusive so you're telling me they're putting out these they're putting out these things to try to get you to buy something and then when you show up you're looking like oh well i guess they don't really have exactly what they said i get it i do understand but that's how everything works in general okay everybody's going to put out these bullshit advertisements to try to make it seem like they do something they actually don't do and then when you get the product you realize it's actually not what it is um it is what it is i'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing it's just how the society works right now um it does suck sometimes depending on what you're doing so i can kind of see where she's coming from on this one they want to use us but they don't actually want to cater to us or so stop buying there that's the number one thing if you know this is happening it's consistently happening and it's like it's not even it's not even a crazy thing at this point why do you samira and all these other people go into these stores and still try to buy the clothes if you know they're not doing it and they fucked your mouth consistently over and over and over again stop supporting them that's the only way you could do it is like stop supporting them financially stop giving them your money um i personally Thought that there was a lot of Marvel movies that were really good. But then the later ones started being shit. So I stopped subscribing to Disney+. Plus. I stopped going to the movies. I stopped doing this because I thought the movies were garbage. I supported them when they were doing good things. But after that, it wasn't worth it anymore. So a lot of these people, you got to vote with your wallet. You can't just like think. You can't just complain on the internet as if that's going to do anything at all. These are big multi-million dollar corporations. They're not going to do shit. Or sell to us or have us as a customer. And by the way, a lot of these brands do have plus size clothing in store. Their definition of plus size, though, is like really far reaching. So, you know, like maybe for most people, an XXL would be plus size, but it's not. Most of these people don't even look at XXL as a plus size because, you know, it's really crazy. I know guys that are in their 200s that are wearing XXLs and they're not plus sizes. Bro, these guys are literally gutted up. They got belly buttons longer than their meats. And you're telling me they're not plus sizes? Are you sure? Are you sure this guy ain't plus size, man? The amount of people that I see them, and they 100% they, they are big bellied men. But they're not plus size, apparently. So, an XXL is like straight size, apparently. But once you start getting above that, then it becomes, you know, then you become plus size, then you become mid size, then you become uh, oversized or BBW or BB, I don't know, BBL. I don't, I have no idea how this works anymore. The size charts are so ambiguous at this point. I, I, I it's really hard for me to decipher it. And you like the Rosetta Stone uh, to try to like get the, the, per, the precise transcriptions to try to understand any of these size inclusive charts anymore. So 
when they say plus size clothing, they're not talking about XXLs. They're talking about way, 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 way beyond that. And sometimes even even bigger than that. I've seen some of these people say 26 and up. If you're not 26 and up, then we can't talk. It's not, it's not, it's not normal. By the way, a size double zero, I believe, is uh, an extra small, right? And I see, I believe a size four is a small. So like you could do the math on that. A size 26 is God Lord. That's just like animal size, like you know, fucking ginormous wildebeest sized. So if you're sitting here and you're complaining that they don't have size 26s in stores or bigger than that, um, dude, what are you expecting? These people that are like size 26 and up, these people don't shop. They don't go outside. They're eating consistently, okay? These people are in their houses, body slamming Uber Eats orders consistently. You got the Uber Eats driver on retainer. They know the guy's first and last name. They know where he lives and they're sending him Christmas presents, okay? They're sending his family gifts for holiday retreats and stuff like that because they're in touch with the Uber drivers. So when you're sitting here and you're going, why don't you have big plus size clothing? They don't sell. These clothes don't sell. There's no money in it for any of these people. So when you sit there and you're complaining that they don't have these options in store, blame yourself. There's no way a size 26 and up, 28, 28, 29, 40s, like these sizes aren't shopping in stores. It's ridiculous. They're using us. They just don't actually want us. So lose, a lot so lose weight. And then once you lose a little bit of weight, then you won't be used anymore because you won't be the, the demographic being used. You weren't made to be size two. And you make sure that you are a size two every day of your life. And guess what? You weren't made to be a size 26. You weren't made to be a size 20. You weren't made to be a size 40. A lot of these people can have their logic literally vice versa right upon them. And they don't realize that it's not... Look, there are some people out there that are a size zero that have to do a lot in order to get to a size zero or a size two or a size whatever. But I feel like a lot of these people don't understand that you're not supposed to be eating the amount of calories that you're actually eating. A lot of these people are eating literally two, three, four, five thousand calories a day when you might not, you might only need 1,500. You know how many people I've met that had no, no idea? that they need to eat 1500 calories on a daily basis, but they had not known that because for their whole lives, they've been eating the same amount of food because when, since they've grown up or whatever, or maybe lifestyle changes occur, you think you eat, you're supposed to eat a lot more than you actually are. Or maybe you have no idea how calories work in general. So a lot of these people are eating double or even triple what they need in a day and not even realizing it. And the same way that somebody's uh, trying to be a, ze a zero or like a size two, yeah, these people have to do a lot of work, but simultaneously you're doing a lot of work to maintain that size as well. To be size two. Two. And you make sure that you are a size two every day of your life, every second of your life. That's same thing with you, except you're just doing it passively. Where somebody needs, if somebody's going to be a size two and they're purposely trying to do it, they may, it might require them to do more work in the sense of like they might be actively thinking about what they have to do in order to maintain that. Whereas for you, you're just feeding into your desires and just eating whatever you want and you have no standards for the foods that you have you have no agency to lose weight and you have you don't care so like you're doing it as well you're just doing it passively it's weighing on you no pun intended and it shows you're angry and you resent every woman around you that isn't trying as hard as you and you think your hard work should pay off i don't understand this i'm pretty sure this is monstrous projection i'm pretty sure like it there might be a few people out there that do think like this, but majority of people that are a size zero or a size two, most of them don't care. Most of them are just living their own lives. Most of them are just like, hey, you know, I lost weight. Now I feel, I feel like I look good. Most people are not looking at plus size queens and going, oh, how come they feel so good in their skin, but I don't feel good in my skin. I mean, I'm sure that happens, but like, dude, this is some monster projection. This isn't probably happening. She probably knows somebody this is happening to, and now she's making a video about it. And I feel like you know, the, this person, Mighty Murphy Moore, for whatever this person's name is, thought this was a good example to, like, point out. But it's an, it's an example that's a very, very, very extreme. And around you that isn't trying as hard as you, and you think your hard work should pay off. It's the exact same. It does pay off. If you're thinner, usually you're healthier. So you're not, you're not seeing the effects of it usually right away but you're seeing it in the long term usually the thing is when a girl posts a video and it's like he cheated on me with a fat blonde bitch <laughs> i have okay that's fine i don't know what that has to do with being fat though if he cheated on you he probably wasn't a good guy to begin with i don't know what that has to do with maintaining a size two and he cheated on you with somebody that was fatter than you that might just mean the fact that that person that you were with was a really f a really shit person i don't know if necessarily it has anything to do with them being weight like weight restricted if they were a size two compared to somebody that was a size 40 i don't know what that has to do anything i don't even know why we're flexing that i'm pretty sure she was talking about herself given the fact that she is blonde and also fat 
I don't know, bro. I have no idea what that even meant. Um, I think she thought that she ate there, but she didn't. That was absolutely, that, that was a terrible, terrible, terrible um, way to explain that. I have a belief, and you are welcome to disagree with me, that there are just people who were born in larger bodies. Yeah, we, we do agree. We do agree that there are people that were born in larger bodies, but larger bodies in the sense of like they're wider. They have maybe more hip capacity, maybe more shoulder width length. Maybe their bones are slightly bigger. You know, these guys like Hathor B. Jornson or Eddie Hall or these big bodybuilder guys, right? Sure. It's hundred percent. There are people that are born in bigger bodies. Me personally, I'm a smaller guy. Okay. I can, I can do one of these. Um, I am definitely skinnier. My bones are not as my bones are not as big, as thick. When I curl more than 20 pounds, my wrist hurts. And I know I can do farmer curls and stuff like that. I have been. But once I get over a certain weight, my wrist, my bones start hurting. So I don't do those things. And that sucks, but it's okay. Because even though I'm limited by uh, smaller bones, it doesn't mean that I'm not physically capable of doing a lot of stuff that everybody else is also capable of doing. I just can't do the extreme things like lifting like, I, I don't know, a cargo plane or something like that. But that's okay. I don't really want to do that to begin with. So... There are people that are born in bigger bodies, but these people conflate those things. They sit there and they say bigger bodies, those guys that I just referred to, that are actually bigger body individuals, and fat people. Those, those are two different things, okay? Somebody that's born into a bigger body, genetically speaking, compared to somebody that is fat as fuck are two different things, okay? Somebody that gains a lot of weight through the process of eating a lot of food compared to somebody that's just naturally bigger in the sense of like they have more bone structure and more genetically gifted uh, muscle bellies, that's different compared to somebody that just eats their way to that same point. Like it's it's way, 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 way different. And you know that it's different, but you're not gonna you're not gonna draw that you're not gonna draw that because you know that if you do, then you lose. There were people who were born in smaller bodies, and there were people who were born in like in between bodies. And yes, there are things that you could do to work against the type of body that you... It depends on what you mean by work against. Now, make sure you understand the way she's explaining this. Because if your bone structure is bigger, there's nothing you could do. If you have big muscle bellies, there's nothing you could do. If you're a smaller person and your bones are just whatever, and you're... <laughs> there's nothing you could do. Like, I can't grow my bones thicker. I can't maintain a bigger body. If I eat more than what I need, I will gain weight, Right. So, no, it's just like make sure you understand that she's she's trying to reframe the argument to try to make it seem like being fat is like not a choice. It's just normal. It's just how things are, which is not. You were born to be in so you can actively do that. It is going to be a struggle for you to actively work against like genetics. And Fatness is not genetic. Um, It might be genetic based off of like things like. You might have more fat receptors in certain places, like maybe if you're a woman, maybe you hold it more in your, you know, waist, maybe you hold it more in your thighs, uh, maybe if you're a man, you hold it more in your gut, maybe you hold it more in your back, I don't know, there might be that, but when it comes to, make no mistake about it, this person right here, depending on how much they weigh, I'm gonna say 400 pounds. If you're 400 pounds and you think that somehow that you're genetically 400 pounds, you're retarded. I, there's no other way to say it than that. You have mental disability somewhere. Okay, Your brain is smoothed out like smooth peanut butter. Okay, So you're not supposed to be that size. And I know that you think that you are or you've somehow managed to convince yourself that you are through the thought processes of – it's genetics, bro, but it's not. If you eat less than what you need, in the sense, it's not even less than what you need, to be honest. If you're maintaining 400 pounds consistently, you're literally eating way more than what you need on a daily basis so consistently that you've actually maintained 400 pounds is actually an anomaly, but that's what it is. If you eat slightly less, let's say hypothetically, you need to eat, let's say, 2,000 calories a day. In order to maintain that 400 pounds, let's say you, you're eating 4,000 calories a day. If you eat 3,500 calories a day, you will lose weight. Now, keep in mind, that is still 1,500 calories more than what you need. But because you are eating in a deficit compared to what you already have been eating in order to maintain that 400, 400 pounds, you are going to lose weight because you're eating less than what you use to maintain that 400 pounds. So you will lose weight. So if your argument is, I... I, I need to eat this much? No, you don't. That's ridiculous, okay? In order to be this size, you are eating an extraordinarily high amount of calories. So don't sit there and try to conflate those two things. I understand why you're doing it because you're trying to make it seem like this is not, like, it's not your fault or it's not your choice. It is. And the type of body that you were predisposed to, 
Um, and it's also really fucked up too because there are people that literally have things that they cannot change about themselves. Like for a long time, I really wanted to be a very tall, strong man. And I had a lot of body dysmorphia because of that because like obviously I wanted to be bigger. I wanted to be taller. I wanted to be having all these things. I wanted to lift big, big, big weights and stuff like that. It took me a little bit of time to realize that that just wasn't me and that's fine. Um, but it really shits on a lot of people because when you conflate those two things, you're making it seem like the people that have these like d these disabilities, not disabilities, but like restraints, such as like somebody like me that wants to be bigger, somebody that wants to be taller, somebody that wants to be wider, somebody that wants to have bigger muscles and things like that. Um, it's not possible for us. And you're you're trying to put these things together and it's really fucked up because you could just lose weight, but I can't just grow more muscle. I can't just grow more bones. And other factors. You can. But it's going to be a struggle. Everything's going to be a struggle. And it's not going to be as much of a struggle as they think you think it is. Because losing weight literally is just determined based off of how much you're eating. So, I, who was born almost a 10-pound baby and have been plus size my entire life. I was born also as a 10-pound baby. I think I was actually born a little bit higher than that. I was a big baby. It doesn't matter, okay? Just because you were born as a bigger baby doesn't necessarily mean as you grow up you're going to be a bigger human being necessarily. And by the way... Uh, that's so crazy to be like, I was born as a 10 pound baby. Therefore me being a 400 or 500 pound woman is justified. You're actually crazy to try to make that correlation. Cause that, if that is what you're implying by what you're, when you, when you say that, that's what you're implying. You're saying it's justified to be that size that you are. Cause you were born as 10 pounds. No, that's not how that works at all. There have been periods in my life where I'm like, you know what? I am going to actively try to struggle against the body that I was given. But you know what? I Listen, stop. Stop doing that shit. You weren't given a body that was 400 or 500 pounds. You were given a body and you chose to make it four or 500 pounds. And you've th convinced yourself that eating the amount of calories that you're eating is normal. But it's not. You could just eat less calories and you will lose weight. I learned. That's stupid. Are you looking in the mirror right now? Are you? Did you just look in the mirror and say that to yourself? That makes a whole lot of sense. It's fine if you want to maintain your 400 or whatever pounds it is that you are, obesity level. But don't sit here and try to seem like it's stupid to lose weight when that's totally within your control. You've, just because you've convinced yourself, just because you put yourself in an echo chamber of yes, queen, and, and somehow managed to convince your stupidity, um, don't throw that. Don't try to project that upon everybody else, okay? That's not how that works at all. You might think it's stupid to lose weight, but other people do not. And just because you've convinced yourself that it's impossible and that you're struggling because you're going against the fundamental idea of your body, you're not. That's stupid. That's what's dumb. Not not the fact that you try to lose weight, but because you've convinced yourself that it's impossible when it's not. It's also not genetics either. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh about it. Yeah, it's so it's yeah. It's so funny that you have literally convinced yourself to stay unhealthy. Teeth whitening strips. That's all I ask, okay? Go on Amazon. They're like 20 bucks for about, I don't know, three, four weeks of treatment or something like that. Just put them on 30 minutes a day, uh, or maybe every other day. They'll do wonders for your teeth, okay? Maybe brush a little bit betterly. I don't know, man. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. Who wants to live their life like that? I'm Who wants to live their life eating literally double or triple what they're eating, what they're supposed to eat in a day and then complain about all the problems that have to do with that particular thing and then always blame it on everybody else? I mean, you're welcome to do whatever you want with your own body. I am very. I think it's interesting when these people say, like, who wants to live like this when they're literally projecting their own insecurities upon us? Like, these people are nonstop complaining about all the problems they have while being fat. And then they sit there and they go, who wants to lose weight? It's hard. Yes, it is hard, but it's also hard to get to the point that you did. There's a reason why it takes so much work to lose that weight because you put in a lot of work to get to that weight. So naturally, it's going to be difficult to get it off. So hey, whatever, bro. Go ahead, man. Keep complaining. Go ahead. Very like Go ahead and eat your like 80,000 calories a day and then try to complain that we're, we're the ones that are weird for trying to lose weight. Pro bodily autonomy. But like I'm not trying to do that anymore. Cool. I have sworn you've that given up. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. Like, go ahead. You've given up. I don't know why you got to tell people how stupid you are on the internet, though. That off since probably like 2014. That's just not something that I want to spend my life doing. Tell me about the health complications that you've had since 2014. Like, has there anything that's been related to your weight at all, or no? It's not. Well, no. I don't see the point. Cool. Because why struggle? against what my body wants to do what does your body want to do hmm? how many hot pockets how many pizza rolls huh how many ice creams how many is that what your body wants to do your body wants to maintain 400 pounds consistently is that what you're saying that's what your body wants to do i think you're con 
My body, let's say for instance, I was a crackhead. My body wants crack and it wants a lot of crack because I'm addicted and I have a lot of it and I love it and I'm going to take everything I have and sell it to try to get this crack because that's what my body wants me to do. Oh yeah, okay. That's how we're doing it, huh? It's just too easy for these people, man. It's too easy for these people to like come up with reasons to feed into, feed into their desires and they don't realize that what they're saying is actually crazy. Rather than just enjoy life food <laughs> and be happy and celebrate what my body can do because what can your body do G gain a lot of weight and fart bodies are amazing sure bodies are amazing your body is a testament to the amount of durability that a human being can withstand 100 percent. it's great that you can maintain this size for as long as you have it's actually more of a testament to the healthcare system if i'm going to be honest and i think some of y'all who want to argue in my comment section could really benefit from that type of mindset change. Have you seen this size zero, size eight trend? You got some shit on your teeth right there. Just brush them a little bit. Just brush them a little bit. And if not, we're going to talk about it. I went through some of the ones that I saw and took screenshots. So when I wear a size zero or two, but the girl next to me wears a size eight and doesn't consistently wear sweatpants and hoodies to try to change her diet to look a certain way or try to change her body, she's winning. This is some really pick me ass shit, bro. Because when I see people doing these particular types of videos, it's not necessarily that they're giving credit to the size eight woman or whatever. What they're actually doing is pointing attention at themselves and saying, I feel bad. I'm not doing the right thing, but it's okay because I'm making sure everybody else understands how great this other person is. It's really fucking pick me, dude. So many pick me's in today's world, dude. This woman is literally, not this woman, not Mighty Murphin, but this Marissa woman or whatever her name was right here. This, this white girl with the blonde hair in the, in the, in the video here in the bathroom. I don't know what she is right now, but I'm guessing it's some type of bathroom or something. That's really fucking pick me. And you know what? TikTok is full of pick me's. TikTok is full of people that are trying to inadvertently point at other people and go, see, this person's really amazing. And while subtly going, me, right? Yeah, look how great I am for telling everybody how great they are. Give me credit for that. It's it's stupid. Um, and if you think it's anything other than these people just being pick me's, then you're fucking dumb. That's just what this is, okay? They're not giving awareness to anything. They're not saying anything of value. All they're doing is subtly trying to get attention, and it's fucking gross. But it's okay. When you're like, if you're like 14 years old and you're doing this, dude, okay, I get it, man. Like, everybody wants attention. But, like, if you're, like, above the age of 18 or 20 doing this shit, Jesus, man. It's like thirst traps. What are you doing, man? Stop it. Uh and, by the way, what I love about Mighty Murph and Morph right here or whatever, Morph and Flash, is that she thinks this is, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's proven a point. Like, can you believe thin people actually are saying this? So thin people know. Thin people know the truth. No, they don't. This is just a pick me. This is somebody that's literally trying to get attention. And you fell for it. You're stupid. Just just a testament to how stupid this person is. Okay. When I'm a size zero, extra small, just to clarify. Yeah, and it's a really beautiful thing as well. When somebody says, I'm a size zero, and then posts th four pictures of themselves. And their perfectly contoured body, you know, standing at particular angles to really show off the midsection and the neck and the jawline and the butt cheeks and the arms and everything. And then say, but you know, she's the real winner being a size four or a size eight because she's not doing anything to maintain her size. Pick me. Pick me as fuck. Absolutely. Good Lord. Pick me shit, dude. Try that that's but go ahead. Let's see how this woman... Let's see how this woman's going to misinterpret this. They're small. And I know how to do makeup, but the girl next to me is naturally beautiful. Oh, and you know how to do makeup. And she's naturally beautiful. Uh-huh. Definitely. She's a size four with the most beautiful body. She's the real winner in my eyes. Do we get where this is going? Yeah, do we get me. the vibes so yet? Pick me, Ashley. Okay, so now we're getting to some that are like making fun of this trend, which is what I appreciate. When I'm a size zero girl, but I'm standing next to the size 10 girl, I see no difference between us. No one's winning. We are most likely both going through our own perso personal issues. This trend is weird. It is weird. I mean, there is nothing wrong in, in acknowledging that someone who is a size zero has more thin privilege than someone who's a size 10. So there is going to be differences between you. Is that what we got from that? Beautiful, beautiful, mighty Murphy. Um, But yes, this trend is weird. I agree. I agree. This is just pick me's. All it is just pick me's. If this is a trend. I didn't know this trend existed, but yeah, it's, it's very pick me. Literally, no one is making fun of you for being a size four. Agreed. They're not. 
and nobody is making fun of you for being a size 20 either. I mean, there might be some exceptions to that rule, but whatever, dude. When I fit in a size zero jean, but the girl beside me fits into a size six and never had to be in fear to step on a scale worrying about what her weight would be because she couldn't gain anything anymore. She's the real winner. Cool, bro. I mean, yeah. What? When I'm a size six girl standing next to a girl and I have no fucking clue what size she wears, legitimate, because, like, you literally can't tell what size someone is. That's a fact, dude. Women's sizes are very, very dynamic, and they make absolutely zero sense. All right, guys, that's the end of the video today. I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety today, uh, I'd appreciate it if everybody can leave down in the comment section, write in big letters, or I guess if there's an emoji for it, write down there green, because green is a very beautiful color. I love green. I slowly but surely have loved green. I originally didn't like green. I was like super, super like... I don't know, man. I was like, I like red. Red's really cool. But now I'm starting to think that I've never been a red girly. Now I'm starting to think I've been a green girly, personally. I think I'm a green girly. Green girlies for the win. Let me know what your favorite color is, too. But representation down below, green. Make everything real green. We need to make the earth greener, apparently. I've not known about this, but we need to make the earth greener. And that's awesome. But anyway, uh, you're, ama you're amazing. You're beautiful. You're spectacular. I love the way you wipe your mouth after you take bites of food, that's really great. I love the way you brush your teeth. You would always ensure that your teeth are properly plaque-free and you floss. That's awesome. That's amazing. I love the way your teeth are so white and pearly and they're so amazing. Um, I really love the way you take care of yourself. But anyway, guys, we're going to the video here. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be listed down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.